Welcome to the deep dive. Let's get started. So first, let's just break down digoxin. Okay. What is it? Where does it come from? What does it do? All right. So digoxin yep. comes from the foxglove plant. Okay. And we use it to treat heart failure and atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. It basically helps the heart muscle contract with more force. Too much digoxin can be toxic. Okay. It can throw off the heart's rhythm and cause electrolyte imbalances. Mm -hmm. It can even affect other organ systems. This is a powerful drug. Yeah. It helps the heart, but it can also cause problems. How does it work at the cellular level? So digoxin inhibits the sodium potassium adenosine triphosphatase pump. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yeah, I know right, you. Write that down for me. So basically, it increases intracellular calcium. Okay. And this increased calcium leads to stronger heart muscle contractions. Mm -hmm. However, excessive calcium can lead to those dangerous heart rhythm abnormalities and electrolyte imbalances that we talked about. Okay. Hyperkalemia is a particular concern in toxic doses. So just the right amount helps. Exactly. Too much throws everything off balance. Right. You mentioned chronic and acute toxicity earlier. Yeah. What's the difference in how those present? So chronic digoxin toxicity develops gradually. Okay. The symptoms are often nonspecific, like fatigue, okay. weakness, nausea, confusion. Mm -hmm. This is more common in elderly patients, especially those with underlying heart conditions. Makes sense. Renal insufficiency and electrolyte imbalances can make it worse. So chronic toxicity is kind of like a slow burn? Yeah, you could say that. What about acute toxicity? How does that present? Acute digoxin toxicity happens rapidly usually after a large ingestion of digoxin. Okay. Patients typically have prominent gastrointestinal symptoms, like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Ugh, not fun. No, not at all. Okay. Then after those gastrointestinal symptoms, we see the cardiac abnormalities, like bradycardia and arrhythmias. So acute toxicity is more dramatic. Yeah, it hits the gut first and then the heart. You also mentioned that digoxin toxicity can affect organs besides the heart. Oh, yeah. That's important to remember. It's not just a heart problem. Right. Tell me more about those non-cardiac symptoms. Okay, so digoxin can cause weakness, fatigue, malaise. Okay. Some patients get gastrointestinal issues like nausea, vomiting, anorexia, abdominal pain, or diarrhea. Mm. Even vision changes can occur. Blurred vision, photophobia, and even seeing colored halos. Wow, colored halos. That's interesting. Yeah, it's called chromatopsia. I'm gonna remember that one, chromatopsia. Yeah. What about neurologic symptoms? Those can happen too. Dizziness, headache, confusion, delirium, hallucinations, and even seizures are possible. So digoxin toxicity can mimic a lot of other conditions. It definitely can. How do we diagnose it with certainty? Diagnosing digoxin toxicity requires a comprehensive approach. Okay. We need to consider the patient's history, their symptoms, and their lab findings. Mm -hmm. We measure the serum digoxin level. Levels above 2.5 nanograms per milliliter are generally considered toxic. Okay, 2.5 nanograms per milliliter. But there's an important caveat. Okay, what's that? If we draw the levels too early after ingestion, they might be falsely elevated. Oh, that's tricky. Yeah, so we need to wait at least six hours after ingestion for an accurate assessment. Six hours, got it. Electrolytes are also crucial, especially potassium. Hyperkalemia often suggests acute toxicity. Okay. And hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia can make chronic toxicity worse. Interesting. And finally, we need an electrocardiogram to identify any heart rhythm abnormalities. The electrocardiogram is key. What kind of heart rhythm abnormalities are we looking for with digoxin toxicity? So the most common finding is premature ventricular contractions. Okay. We might also see atrioventricular block bradycardia, ventricular tachycardia, mm. or even bidirectional ventricular tachycardia. Yeah, say that three times fast. I know, right? Okay, so the electrocardiogram gives us some valuable clues. Definitely. What if a patient has life-threatening digoxin toxicity? Well, luckily there's an antidote. Oh, good. What is it? It's called digoxin-specific fragment antigen-binding antibodies. It's another mouthful. It is. But we usually just call it Digifab. Digifab, much easier. Right. Tell me more about Digifab. Okay. So these antibodies, they're actually derived from sheep. From sheep? Wow. Yeah. Interesting, huh? That is interesting. They bind to and neutralize circulating digoxin. This helps remove it from the body. So Digifab is like a digoxin magnet. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. It grabs the digoxin and pulls it out of the system. Exactly. When do we use Digifab? We reserve Digifab for life-threatening digoxin toxicity. Okay. So things like severe bradycardia, ventricular arrhythmias, and hyperkalemia exceeding 5 millimoral. Those are serious situations. Yeah, Digifab can be a lifesaver in those cases. How much Digifab do we give? The dose depends on the situation. 
Of course. For hemodynamically unstable patients with an unknown ingested amount, we administer 10 vials over 30 minutes. 10 vials? That's a lot. It is. But in those situations, we need to act fast. What do we know how much digoxin the patient ingested? If we know the ingested amount, we can calculate the digifab dose based on the fact that one vial binds 0.5 milligrams of digoxin. Okay, so dose calculation is crucial. Absolutely. Now let's switch gears a bit. Okay. Let's talk about risk factors. All right. What puts patients at a higher risk of developing digoxin toxicity? There are many factors that can increase the risk. Renal insufficiency is a major one. Okay. Impaired kidney function leads to digoxin accumulation. That makes sense. The kidneys are responsible for eliminating digoxin. Yes. So if the kidneys aren't working properly, digoxin levels can build up. Right. What other risk factors should we be aware of? Well, advanced age is another significant risk factor. Okay. Elderly patients often have reduced renal function, making them more susceptible to digoxin toxicity. Mm -hmm. Drug interactions are also a major concern. Numerous medications can interact with digoxin. Oh, yeah. Drug yeah. interactions. Can you give me some examples? Sure. So quinidine and amiodarone increase digoxin levels. Okay. Verapamil, diltiazem, and ephedipine can also increase digoxin levels. Got it. Erythromycin and clarithromycin inhibit digoxin metabolism. Mm. This leads to higher levels. Okay. Even captopril can increase digoxin levels. So we need to be very careful about combining digoxin with these medications. Absolutely. What about electrolytes? Do they play a role in digoxin toxicity risk? Absolutely. Hypokalemia enhances digoxin effects. Okay. This increases the risk of toxicity. Mm. This is particularly important in patients taking diuretics because they often have low potassium. Right. Diuretics can deplete potassium. Exactly. Hypomagnesemia also predisposes to digoxin toxicity. Yes. And hypertalcemia can contribute as well. So electrolyte imbalances can significantly impact digoxin's effects. They really can. What about the patient's underlying health? Does that play a role? Yes. Patients with underlying heart disease are more susceptible, especially those with severe or decompensated heart failure. So digoxin requires extra caution in those patients. Definitely. Are there any other risk factors we haven't covered? A couple more. Hypothyroidism may alter digoxin metabolism. Okay. And concomitant use of sympathomimetic drugs like epinephrine can potentiate digoxin effects. This increases arrhythmia risk. So many factors to consider. It's a lot to keep in mind. It highlights the importance of careful patient selection right. and close monitoring when prescribing digoxin. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us on The Deep Dive. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.